تعالى بركة الله. So we are back. So we'll come back uh, to the mother prayer break. So we're going to resume our program and we go back to Dr. Muhammad again. So Muhammad uh, Samir, uh, his uh, blood bank registrar, is the officer for training and continuous education in, in regional blood bank Riyadh. And he has uh, two masters, Master of Transfusion and Medicine from Barcelona University in Spain, also Master in Clinical and Clinical Pathology from Tanta University in Egypt, has more than 20 years uh, experience in blood bank. And his uh, second talk of today is about quality management and massive blood transfusion. So Dr. Muhammad, please, and the mic is yours. You can share the slides and start your talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Ya ahina wa sahlam bikum zami'an marat taniya al-naharda. Atamanna ma kunsh dhuft illa alikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu wa salamu wa salamu wa salamu. Uh, uh, today is the second lecture about the massive blood transfusion and the quality management. Uh, let us speak about the hemorrhage, and the hemorrhage is the most common cause of death within the first hours of arrival to trauma center. More than 80% of the death in the OR room and nearly to 50% of the death in the first 24 hours after injury are due to exsanguination and coagulopathy. While only 33% of the trauma patients will receive a massive transfusion, more than 10 units of packed RBCs within 24 hours, these patients consume about the 70% of all blood transfused at the trauma center. And show that no, you can the hemorrhage, a rough mada the massive shedid and no, the be sabb معظم المشاكل الوفاة في في من يصل إلى trauma center إلا إنه حوالي ثلاثة في المية فقط لغير من التروما سنتر التروما بيشنت بي هم تقريبا اللي بيستنزفون الرصيد في بنك الدم. The implementation of the massive transfusion protocol have been associated with the reduction in mortality and overall blood product used in the trauma center. The purpose of the following discussion is to identify the necessary components of an MTB, Massive Transfusion Protocol, and address a key issues involved in developing of Massive Transfusion Protocol. And Massive Transfusion Protocol, the Massive Transfusion Protocol should be a written document accessible to all, and the staff should be familiar with the procedure. Initial training and subsequent regular drills are recommended to maintain the competency. وفي الحقيقة فعلا إنه المسيف ترانسفيوجن بروتوكول not only as a protocol should be trained should be familiar with all stuff لازم كل الستاف اللي موجود يقدر يبقى familiar بي ولازم وحقيقة هو اللي بيفرق فعلا التدريب على فعلا على الحالات ما يشبه الحالات كيف سنتصرف معها بحيث ان احنا نحاكي الواقع اللي موجود Item will be discussed in, the, in, in this lecture. What is a massive hemorrhage, massive transfusion? Where can be expected massive transfusion protocol, team activation criteria, initiation, transfusion service and blood products, transfusion goals, termination, and lastly, common error and adverse events. In this point, in this point, inshallah, we will speak about the new update also in the uh, trans in our uh, transfusion service, which is the low titer O whole blood, low titer O whole blood, new update added to the last edition, not last edition, before the last edition of the 
ABB standard also. For massive transfusion and how to deal with, there is no universal definition for the massive hemorrhage or massive transfusion and also no universal protocol for dealing with it. But the latest ABB definitions of the massive transfusion protocol, massive transfusion uh, hemorrhage, and massive hemorrhage and the massive transfusion are the administration of greater than eight, not 10, now it's eight, the administration of greater than eight units of the back RBCs within less than 24 hours or acute administration of more than four units within one hour of adult recipient. This is the last definition of the massive transfusion in the ABB technical manual last edition. And also consider the exchange transfusion of neonate and transfusion of 35 milli per kg within three hours or less for infant is also a massive transfusion and a massive hemorrhage. Clinical situation may need to activate the massive transfusion. Massive hemorrhage and the massive transfusion may occur in the following clinical context. Um, massive hemorrhage and the massive transfusion may occur in the following clinical context. Trauma expected to have the massive transfusion and so the massive transfusion protocol. Uh, as in, but هل في أي مشكلة في الصوت, دكتور محمد؟ لا المشكلة في الصوت هل في مشكلة في الصوت؟ دكتور أنا ما عندي مشكلة في الصوت. الصوت واضح جدا. بالنسبة لي واضح جدا. طيب إن شاء الله نكمل بإذن الله. Uh, in the postpartum hemorrhage also, we, we can expect to activate massive transfusion protocol in the cardiovascular complication, like rupture, abdominal aortic aneurysm, and also maybe in the acute upper GI bleeding and post some surgery. Scope of massive transfusion. إحنا ليه بنعمل massive transfusion؟ why we activate and why we implement massive transfusion؟ The aim of the proper activation of massive transfusion protocol has been shown to improve patient outcome, reduce the patient mortality, and also to reduce the wastage of the blood product. وده جزء يخصنا بشدة هذا الجزء الثالث reduce the wastage of blood product. للأسف فعلا بنوك الدم بتستنزف بمعنى الكلمه مش بس المريض هو عشان بيستنزف بنوك الدم بتستنزف عند تفعيل الماسيف ترانسفيوجن بروتوكول بدون اي وجه حق او بدون اي جاستيفيكيشن واضح فعلا بتستنزف بنوك الدم معنى كلمه استنزاف Also scope of the massive transfusion protocol to achieve to achieve the scope of massive transfusion protocol, the following items must be fulfilled. عشان نقدر إن إحنا فعلاً نقدر ننجح إن إحنا نوصل للmassive transfusion protocol, the ideal massive transfusion protocol, محتاجين إن إحنا the patient يتعامل له early recognition of blood loss, maintain the tissue perfusion and oxygenation by restoration of blood volume and hemoglobin, control bleeding with early surgical endoscopic or radiological intervention, which is called the damage control surgery and the early management of coagulose. And early administration of antifibrinolytic. الموضوع فقط ليس فقط نقل دم. برضو في بعض الحاجات الضرورية جدا. What's most important in dealing with the bleeding, like the antifibrinolytic, tranexamic acid, one of the golden, golden bees in our hand to deal with uh, massive transfusion. Maintenance of the normal thermic and normal calcium, because the hypothermic and the hypokalemia, uh, uh, hypothermic and the hypocalcemia 
also bo both uh, can uh, uh, can uh, worsen the condition of the patient. Reversal of the anticoagulant and the antiplatelet medication, if applicable, this also our one of the scope of the MTB monitoring and management of the complication of massive transfusion. Massive transfusion may be administrated in the following clinical area. In the AR, we expect it also to, be, to have the MTB activation, operating room intensive care unit. The lead of the MTB in ER, which is the ER physician or trauma team leader, in OR, anesthesiologist, and in the ICU, in the staff physician and the clinical film. One of the important team in the MTB, which is the transfusion medicine. The transfusion medicine rule will be uh, uh, about one of the technician technologist is usually designated to assist with the massive transfusion protocol and will keep track of what product are issued and when needed. لازم دائما لو many staff of blood bank لو البنك الدم كبير لازم يكون الجميع familiar طبعا بالتكيف التعامل مع ال MTB بس بيبقى دائما في واحد هو ال assigned بالتعامل مع ال MTB لازم واحد مفروض في كل شيفت لازم يكون assigned بالتعامل مع ال MTB هو المسؤول عن انه keep track وانه prepare more units if needed like this Transfusion medicine physician regularly communicate with the team at the patient bedside. Transfusion medicine uh, physician may provide recommendation on the optimal transfusion therapy. Additional team is the respiratory therapist can help perfusionist and porter. Porter, which is very important role also in uh, in the team of the massive transfusion. Massive transfusion activation, general criteria, there is, there, are, uh, there is no clear indication for the massive transfusion protocol. Massive transfusion, in many cases, the decision to transfuse in bullet trauma or other critical cases is based on the physiological state of the patient, evidence of amount of blood loss, and potential for ongoing hemorrhage. دول الثلاثة كريتيريا اللي على أساسها بالضبط يقدر إنه يحدد. طبعا ما فيش كلام نهائي واضح. هنقول بعض examples إنما no final decision أو no no definite criteria for activation of the massive trial universally. No universal definite criteria for activation of the MTB. Example for MTB activation, specific criteria, like for the trauma patient. For the trauma patient, like penetrating trauma and resistant hypotension, two measurements of the systolic blood pressure less than 90 and taken five minutes apart. Or blunt trauma and resistant hypotension and one of the following. Massive hemothorax, Positive fast scan, fast scan is a focus assessment with sonography, and can be can choose choose the can choose the hemoperitoneum or hemopericardium, and also if there is the pelvic fracture. This is of the some of the suggested criteria for the trauma patient to activate the massive transfusion protocol. For the cardiovascular patient and for obstetric patient, if there is cardiac or aortic rupture, if there is arterial leak, if there is known or suspected rupture or leaking abdominal aortic aneurysm, uh, post-operative, I'm uh, sorry, is there any problem in the voice? Okay, we can use it. 
post operative chest tube drained more than 1000 cc in 30 minutes or less or more than 500 cc vaginal blood loss and hypotension not responding to crystalloid bolus uh, and uh, more than 100% blood loss follow, following the cesarean section and the hypotension not crystal not responding to crystalloid bolus when the uh, mtb activated the initial initial management of the patient should be secure the airway and provide oxygen, obtain proper vascular access, IV or central line, start IV fluid only. We noted that the only 0.9% uh, 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 NACL solution is compatible with the blood product. Setup of rapid uh, infusion warmer, administration of the tranexamic acid, if uh, she and uh, keep cool the patient temperature more than 35%, place patient on continuous monitoring. This is the initial patient management should be like this. And initial laboratory investigation should be send the type and screen for the blood bank, bank top tube, CBC tube, for the laboratory. INR sent to INR, uh, activated partial thromboplastin time, ABTT, and fibrinogy. Electrolyte ionized the calcium and the creatinine and venous blood gas. In the uh, MTB activation and dealing with the blood transfusion, there are three approaches for blood transfusion in the MTB. Either ratio based, typically ratio, either you will transfuse components on the ratio based, typically ratio of plasma and platelet, two RBCs range it from one to one and or one to two. This one approach. Second approach, you can depend on lab based, lab based result, you can depend on lab based result. So you can uh, transfuse according to the result, actual result or point of care testing driving. Point of care testing driving, also you can depend on the transfusion. Okay. So this is the three approaches. These are three approaches to blood transfusion in the massive transfusion, in the massive transfusion, uh, according to the massive transfusion protocol. The best protocol for RBCs and the plasma transfusion is the ratio-based resuscitation. And the platelet is the lab-based approach or ratio based and for cryoprecipitate is the lab based approach. Again, this, there are the three approaches used in the blood transfusion in the massive, during the massive transfusion protocol activation, either ratio based or lab based or point of care based. Okay, for RBCs and the plasma, usually prefer to be in, uh, depend on the ratio based for the platelet according to the situation. Some situation need to be ratio based. Some situation can be also, can be uh, lab based. For cryo, the best uh, approaches for the cryo is the lab based approach. The general rule in the blood transfusion, usually the general rule for blood transfusion is the, should be the blood should be cross-match compatible, ABO and cross-match compatible. But following in initiation of the, or activation of MTB, RBCs must be immediately available for pickup. If patient, if no patient sample or the sample of the patient has been sent, but the pre-transfusion pre test, like blood grooving, antibody screening, and cross-matching has not been completed, the patient will receive O and cross-matched RBCs. So the first case, if the patient has no sample, no sample for the patient, or even there is sample for the patient, but pre-transfusion test not, be, not have been completed, 
and the patient case need to activate the massive transfusion protocol. So the patient will receive immediately should receive the O uncross matched RBCs. For male will be O positive, but for female will be O negative. Okay. If the patient pre-transfusion test has been completed, she will can receive, she not can receive, she must receive cross-match compatible ABO, uh, uh, ABO compatible RBCs. Okay. Because not usually the uh, MTB, MTB activated in the ER. In ER, we can expect that there is no sample for the patient, or even if the sample, the pre-transfusion test, uh, not have been done until now. But sometimes in OR, sometimes in OR, like uh, patient placenta previa, approach placenta, like this in OR. So uh, expected that the patient has before one day or maybe in the same day, he has uh, all pre transfusion tests done before. This for the RBCs, but for plasma, this one is the for transfusion of RBCs, but for plasma. Plasma should be administrated with the ratio for RBCs. The first color is four units, should be four units with the ratio for RBCs, four RBCs and four units. And the second and subsequent color also should be four units. Any type of plasma can be issued, FFB or thawed plasma or even liquid plasma. FFB is the most common type of plasma we have but the problem, if the FFB is still frozen, still frozen, it will take about 20 minutes to be ready. So the thawed plasma, most more suitable to use and also liquid plasma can be used. All, of the, all types of plasma can be used, even the FFB or uh, plasma frozen within 24 hours, or plasma frozen after 24 hours in room temperature, or thawed plasma or liquid plasma, all types of plasma will be helpful in the massive transfusion. And uh, even there is difference in the, uh, uh, in the uh, labile coagulation factors between the thawed and liquid plasma and the FFB, but uh, despite this, low degree of the coagulation factor or the little degree, less, less uh, amount of the factors, the vial factors, but can all work together as a team and can solve the problem in the uh, plasma and can do coagulation. Plasma must be ABO compatible if grouping number four or A, AB can be used or low titer A. Low titer A is the one of also of updates, uh, but, but not newly updates, but can also use low titer A in the plasma. If the AB plasma, you don't have AB plasma, sufficient amount, you can use A, you can use A plasma with low titer. A plasma with low titer. So you can do titration for group of donor A, and use the one donor, the one A uh, donor with the low titer of anti B. So A B or low titer of, of low titer A. For platelet, platelet also, as we said before, we can use it as uh, based on the lab result. Uh, as we transfuse one adult dose. If the platelet is less than 100 uh, by 10 power uh, 9 per liter for cases CNS or spinal cord bleeding or trauma brain injury, or we, we can also transfuse one adult dose of platelet if the platelet is less than 50 by 10 power 9 per liter for other cases, okay, other cases. Or if there is any, any count of the platelet bus, but with the dysfunction of the platelet, like in the cardiac surgery, open heart surgery, open heart surgery usually use heparin, 
in uh, to prepare the patient and to use the machine and many things. So even the platelet is high, we cannot depend on the platelet count at this time, and we have transfuse also one adult dose. For this approach of lab based on the lab results, there is another approach also for the some patients like the postpartum hemorrhage, like the uh, approach placenta and like this, this patient when the platelet here is very effective. A platelet will be administrated based on ratio, based on ratio. And also can be, can be in, must be in the first color as also one adult dose. One adult dose, what you H is uh, one adult dose of platelet. One adult dose of platelet equal to one aphoresis platelet unit, or from four to six whole blood derived platelet. Okay, one adult dose equal to one aphoresis unit, or from four to six whole blood derived platelet. The best selected group usually is AB, but any blood group can be given in the transfusion. The massive transfusion for cryoprecipitate, for cryoprecipitate transfusion uh, during the MTB, uh, usually we uh, transfuse cryo. If fibrinogen, this this first cryo usually based on the uh, lab lab result, and during MTB transfusion of cryo, also if the level of fibrinogen less than 1.5 gram their deciliter. So it can be good guide for the uh, driver state transfusion to avoid loss of the Eurostock. Random dose usually of driver state, which is the random adult dose, is the 10 units, 10 units, 10 single units of the driver state. Any group can be used. Thawing and pulling of the cryo usually take about the 20 minutes. For adults, for some cases, like postpartum hemorrhage, cryoprecipitate also can be offered in the first quarter. MTB activation, let us speak about the shipments. Shipments for adults also, for adults, usually the first shipment, color with six units of packed RBCs and six units of plasma. You can use also for four units of RBCs and four units of plasma. For some patients such as postpartum hemorrhage or a bone request also can add it one unit of one adult unit of the platelet and 10 units of the cryo. Usually, and better best practice for cryo state is to give it as a pooling, not as a single unit, but pooling and single a pooling, it will take time like at 20 minutes. The second shipment, second shipment uh, will be the cooler also with four units of the RBCs and four units of plasma and will be prepared the second, the, the subsequent cooler every 30 minutes. Platelet and the cryobor state must be ordered as per clinical situation and laboratory results. These are shipments, this according to the AABB, these are shipments, different shipments according to the different ages. New need, this for new need, we will observe that only the first, in the first bag, only half unit of, of packed RBCs, half unit of plasma, and no cryo and platelet in the first. And when we give platelet in the second bag, it will be only one quarter of the uh, aphoresis unit. This for new need, this for infant, this for infant, one unit, one unit, only one unit. This infant from the six to 10 kilogram, one unit, one unit. And when we add platelet in the second bag, usually half of the aphoresis unit. When we add cryo here, only one unit for the new need, and here two units for the Unit. Here, the uh, uh, younger child from 11 to 25 kilogram, 
the package. The first package will be two unit, two unit, and who added the platelet in the second package will be one aphoresis. Okay, and the one added cryo will be four units. This is a suggested package, but can be changed and we can add according to the situation here in, uh, add here one aphoresis, platelet, and here four units of the cryo. Older child, older child from 26, 26 uh, to 50 gram, a kilogram of uh, kilogram. The first package will be three units of the RBC, three units of plasma. And when we add, usually add one aphoresis and add for six units of crime. For uh, adolescent, more than 50 kilogram weight, the first package be, oh, uh, become the five units, five units of plasma and add one unit of aphoresis. And when add cryo, it will be eight units, okay? <clears throat> Let us speak about the one of the new update and new component now added to our practice in blood band, which is the low titer O whole blood, low titer O whole blood. Usually whole blood, usually it's separated into the component. However, it can be stored as a whole blood as it is without any changes for transfusion up to maximum 35 days, okay? According to the uh, anticoagulant storage solution. Recently, successful use of low titer antibody group O whole blood in trauma resuscitation has renewed interest, especially after adding this point in the ABB standard. 31, uh, 31's edition. This point added to the previous two standards uh, in a, a previous two standard when they success to use the type of whole blood, which is O, but not all O. It's O with low titer of anti-A and the anti-B. This type of O can solve many problem in the massive transfusion. Whole blood and RBCs has the similar volume, similar volume and identical storage and transportation, uh, transportation temperature requirements. Whole blood offer operational simplicity compared to the balanced component delivery. Delivery of balanced ratio of the plasma and the platelet for massively transfused patients. One of the big problem and uh, controversial uh, uh, issue in the massive transfusion is uh, we will issue based uh, ratio based one to one or one to two. Why? Because there is some effect on this ratio and on the coagulation. So one of the problem is dilutional coagulopathy sometimes. Sometimes. So when we add, when we use whole blood. With the, uh, with the natural balance between the, between the plasma and RBCs, it will uh, be more uh, suitable and more successful for, for restore of the coagulations and restore the perfusions of the tissue. Uh, and for the cold and also the new, there is a new standard for the cold stored platelet. Now, cold storage platelet has approval for the three days. Cold storage, uh, uh, cold storage platelet now get approval for three days. And now under trial and under variant of American FDA, the st storage of the cold aphoresis platelet, cold aphoresis platelet can be, uh, up to 15 days. So even within the three days, within the three days until now, until now, according to the current approval, we even the platelet suitable for use within the whole blood. So the whole blood now, all whole, all low titer whole blood can also 
be benefit from the platelet within the first three days. Even the platelet, even the whole blood is more than three days, like 20 days, 13, 30 days, we can give the platelet individual or give the platelet as a platelet component. But we keep the ratio between the RBCs. So the transfusion of low titer O whole blood, this is the term, this is the abbreviation for the low titer O whole blood. Low titer O whole blood providing a balanced resuscitation fluid in one bag rather than up to four bags of the platelet, RBCs, platelet, and plasma. Another advantage of fast tracking and availability of this O. There is, a, so we usually recommend the trauma centers, usually, to get the uh, fridges, fridges with sufficient amount of low titer O whole blood, low titer O whole blood. So we, in this, we can, uh, we can get benefit from many things and avoid delay, avoid uh, imbalance in the resuscitation fluid, many things. There is no universal determination for the low titer. What is this? What is it? Low titer, which is, uh, but many institutes accept low titer whole blood when it's anti-A and the anti-B titer is less than 50. Anti-A and anti-B titer is less than 50. And it's only one test can be used to determine if, if the, this whole blood is less than 50 or more than 50. Some precautions during the blood transfusion, usually use uh, of rapid infusion and blood warmer device for infusion of blood product and vestation fluid. So infusion, rapid infusion device and blood warmer is important during important in many places like ER, ICU, and OR. Don't transfuse platelet and the cryo through the warmer. RBCs and plasma usually transport and stored in the cooler during MTP platelet and the cryoprecipitate usually kept, must be kept at room temperature, don't place in the cooler. Goals, transfusion goals during, during the MTV activation. Once we reach to our goal, so we can stop transfusion and stop MTB transfusion and substitute with or replace with the uh, simple transfusion. The following should be used as a guidelines only, not replace the clinical judgment. Transfuse of RBCs to maintain the hemoglobin more than more than or equal to eight gram percent. Transfuse the platelet at one to one to, uh, to are transfused of the plasma at one to one to RBCs. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to uh, to maintain INR uh, uh, more than uh, one point less uh, less than one point five and APTT. Uh, less than 1.5 number, 1.5 times by our, uh, our limit of normal. Transfuse cryo usually to maintain the fibrinogen more than 1.5 gram per liter. Transfuse platelet, this all we spoke about, we speak about now uh, uh, transfusion goal in the massive transfusion. Transfuse platelet to maintain platelet count of uh, 100 by uh, power, uh, 10, power, uh, 10 power 9 per liter for CNS spinal cord bleeding or from brain engine and keep the platelet usually uh, for uh, around 50 by 10 power 9 per liter for all other bleeding patients. Not if the platelet dysfunction is suspected, transfuse platelet regardless of the platelet count. Termination of the activation, uh, MTB activation. Termination either by the 
bleeding is controlled or patient is deceased. لا لا قدر الله يعني إن البيشنت قد يكون ديسيس. Reassess need of ongoing MTB every 30 minutes if transfusion requirement has decreased. Consider the termination of MTB and provide MTB transfusion. Transfusion replaced MTB transfusion by simple transfusion to whom necessary. Inform the, the trauma or MTB team must inform the transfusion service that the MTB has been terminated and return MTB caller and any untransfused product as soon as soon as soon as possible to avoid wastage. MTB adverse events. MTB adverse events. Lethal trait in MTB. Lethal trait in massive transfusion. What is the lethal trait? Severe bleeding in the trauma diminish the oxygen delivery. Severe bleeding in the trauma diminish the oxygen delivery. Okay, which may lead to hypothermia. This in turn can halt the coagulation cascade, preventing blood from clotting, give, give another problem which is the coagulopathy. In the presence, in the absence of the blood bounded oxygen and nutrient, hypoperfusion also, the body cells burn the glucose anaerobically for energy, so they emerge the lactic acid, which lower the blood pH lead to metabolic acidosis. Such increase in the acidity damages the tissue and organ of the body can reduce the myocardial perfusion, further reducing the oxygen delivery. And we will go into the closed circle. Into the closed circle. Hypothermia, coagulopathy, lactic acid, metabolic acidosis, decrease in the myocardial perfusion, hypothermia, and hypo, uh, hypo, uh, hypothermia and no oxygen, halt the coagulation cascade, coagulopathy, lactic acid, and regius circle, closed circle. This is the, the, the dangerous of the uh, uh, massive hemorrhage. And also, uh, if use of the uh, blood products without control. Also, not only the lethal triad, also the transfusion action can be having the, for as any other patient, like acute hemolytic transfusion action, maybe due to, uh, due to uh, fast tracking, due to uh, irritability in the uh, issuing like this can issue something ABO incompatible transfusion or can lead to any uh, uh, non-immunological like trolley, a trolley immunological, uh, immunological condition of the transfusion uh, or the TACO, non-immunological, uh, the TACO, maybe produce the TACO, transfusion associated cardiac overload. That's also due to uh, uh, what's called waste, wastage of the blood and the wastage also of the patient. Patient like this can be die, okay? Because doctor wants to uh, give blood, give blood, give blood, give blood for uh, until what? That's why we. That's why the the uh, uh, the point we discussed before, which is the termination guidelines, termination guidelines, termination guidelines and also uh, transfusion limit, it will be helpful to avoid all this uh, problem. Common error in the MTB, usually poor planning, poor communication, delay in activation of MTB, failure to monitor laboratory parameters during MTB, failure to monitor for and manage the hypothermia. Failure to administer blood product as per MTB. Failure to administer cryoprostate and lay in the termination of MTB. Concluding remarks, be prepared, know the protocol, practice, participate in the mock MTB 
during MTB communicate with all members of team, reassess need of ongoing MTB frequently, return caller and untransfused blood for the blood bank. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khayyam. Thank you so much, Dr. It's uh, really informative. You covered the topic very well. Uh, I'm quite sure that there will be a lot of questions at the end of the talk. We'll leave them uh, to the discussion time. Uh, <clears throat>